So uh, today we're going to do a visit to the Hammond Museum and, and Japanese Stroll Garden. Um, this museum is a, is a little gem that's tucked away in the northeast corner of Westchester. Many of you may have heard of it. I don't know how many of you have gone, but um, it's definitely worth a visit. Um, it's, it, the grounds are really wonderful. There's um, seven acres uh, and, and a beautiful stroll garden that they are in, in the process of, of um, renovating and working, working more on, but, but right now it's quite beautiful. So uh, it's definitely worth a visit. Um, the museum is dedicated to contemporary art exhibitions and the interaction of Eastern and Western traditional art forms. Um, they feature music and dance performances, poetry readings, lectures, um, tea ceremonies, and a wide variety of workshops on art, bonsai, and tai chi, um, for example. I mean, there's a lot of things going on there. Uh, there is also tomorrow, the 55th annual moon viewing concert and dinner. Um, and it starts at 6.30, the actual concert, um, Kodo concert happens at 8.30 at night. Um, you can still sign on to go to hear the concert and do the moon viewing. It's too late to sign on for the, for the dinner. That was, the cutoff was last Wednesday, unfortunately. But hey, you take what you can get. Um, so, all right, let's move on here. This is the entrance to the, to the museum and, and there's a sculpture piece there. And there's actually um, sculpture through the fields and in the gardens and are near the surrounding buildings. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's very walkable space. It's not hilly. It's not, you know, unlike some of the places that I have recommended to you guys, um, you know, it's, it's not a difficult walk. It's a really beautiful, leisurely stroll garden. Um, so let's see. All right, we're going to do a little history. Uh, let me move my head out of here because <laughs> I can't see it right now. Oops. All right, let me go back. Sorry about that. Okay. So uh, Natalie Hayes Hammond founded the museum in 1957. Her experience of world travel with her father, John Hayes Hammond, an engineer, diplomat, and philanthropist, fostered in her a value of cross-cultural enrichment. Ms. Hammond was a miniaturist, Broadway set and costume designer, and an author, um, and an, uh, an artist in needlepoint. Um, it was her experience as a world traveler, though, that, that inspired her to create the Hammond Museum and Stroll Garden. This became the core of her passion to introduce peaceful gather, a peaceful gathering where East meets West. Now, I'm, I'm getting a lot of this from their fabulous uh, website. You know, you can go there. Uh, it, you, you can just Google it and Google the Hammond Museum and you'll get there. Uh, Hammond Museum and Japanese Stroll Garden and you'll get there because there is another Hammond Museum. Her brother um, has, has another Hammond Museum in uh, Gloucester, um, which looks pretty interesting too, but that for another time. <laughs> Okay, as people often travel to escape routine problems and obligations or to escape themselves, so should they find peace in the unhurried journey through a stroll garden. 
some of the shots that are that are here are shots that I took. Some are ones that I got off the 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 internet. Um, so these are these are actually quotes from from Natalie. Um, uh, to hear, to to please the ear. There are songs of native birds, the hum of insects, the the quarrel of frogs, the occasional splash of the carp in the lake, the crunch of pebbles underfoot, the whisper of wind through the pines. The way of the garden. A stroll garden does not reveal itself all at once. Rather, paths are meant to lead from a view of the pond to a view of the distant landscape. The design of a path directs one's progress through the garden. Large stepping stones slow the walk, encourage contemplation of the view, while row after row of smaller, more uniform, stones create a feeling of excitement or anticipation for the approaching future feature excuse me the journey through the stroll garden is meant to be a highly orchestrated voyage to a deeper understanding of nature so as you can see that they have this beautiful little zen rock garden next to the tea room um, the concept of an individual component of the garden symbolized different ideas. Um, it's strictly an Eastern notion. In Japan, the iconography is so well known that modern designers will often quote famous gardens from the past, knowing that the visitors will understand the reference. So we're plugging into a very deep tradition here and getting, getting just a glimpse of the surface of what this is about. But it's beautiful. <laughs> um, one of the things about this is it is an integration of, of, of native plants and, and plantings from uh, from Japan, you know, different species of trees and things like that that are that are in there. Um, so it makes for an interesting, you know, texture. Um, the Japanese garden invites contemplation. Every design element is carefully planned to give structure to an idea. The rocks, sand, water and plants create a microcosmic universe in which the whole is more than the sum of its parts. So, you know, every turn there are these, there are these little, little areas, little niches, and you never know when you're gonna come upon these things. So it, it's, it's subtle, but surprising at the same time. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to try and name each artist with each sculpture at this stage of the game because I, uh, I, I've been having a hard time figuring that out for myself. I will name some of them, um, but there are eight sculptures that have, that have pieces outdoors, uh, plus, uh, well, there's more that I will talk about. But um, so this, this group has... Um, uh, these pieces installed around the property, and um, I will I will get some bigger pictures for you so that you can see where they're located and what they look like in situation. So the platform that the Buddha is is over. Those, those leaves are painted in there. So it's almost like you're looking into a pool, you know, like those leaves are floating. Uh, 
very interesting. So the the um, the name of this show is Bloom Two. Actually, there was a Bloom One. Um, so this is a a new installation that that's that's been in um, since I believe since early in the summer. Um, and all of these are are um, are basically curated in uh, the placement and all of that is is you know, very well thought out. Okay. Now, um, this is a, um, an, in, an installation set of pieces that are throughout the grounds and you kind of have to search for them. Um, C.C. Cole uh, McIntyre, McIntyre, McIntyre um, did, does these kind of episodic pieces. What she does is, well, I'll read, I'll read this little statement. Um, uh, quiet, not obedient, subtle, and not. These minimally impacted natural forms are metaphors for human feeling and life. Usually installed, documented, and then dismantled for use in eventual photographic artist book. On the Hammond grounds, um, these materials from nature can be viewed while left to wear away back to where they came from. So you can see this over in the, in the tree on, on the right, there's actually a set of hides that are hung in that, in that pine tree. And these are, these are some photographs of, of the pieces that are out there. Um, you may have, uh, you have many enlightened qualities during that timeless moment of creating anything, not only art. And those qualities are far more valuable than the product you create. And then we got another quote here from Meredith Monk. Um, Silence is part of the song. So basically the, these, um, she's one of my favorite performance artists. I, I had to throw her in there too. Um, um, these pieces are, are about, you know, they're about pulling together, they're stitching together the natural forms. They, they uh, basically, the, the decomposition is part of the, the piece. And, and so there are, they're, they're placed throughout the grounds and you may or may not notice them because they're so much a part of the landscape. Okay, and there are two more here. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to uh, Sarah Havlin. Um, now, this is an artist that, that I've known her work for a long time, close to 30 years actually. Um, and, and her work has, has evolved. I, I love the new things that she's, she's up to with these, you know, she's been doing this wire mesh stuff for quite a while, but there's, there's something, you know, really fresh and open about what she's, what she's up to now, because she's starting to integrate, um, paper 
into the wire pieces and, and bring in color and things like that. Um, though Sarah Havlin's wire and paper sculptures are inspired uh, by her recent Fulbright uh, Scholar Award to Taiwan to research the, the bird myth, she's been exploring this as a global theme for many years. Okay. All right, I just yes. want to mention, sure. um, I went with you to see this uh, museum in Strolling Gardens, mm -hmm. and we were so taken with the fact that uh, you just take a walk and you all of a sudden come upon something. It was it was so exciting that way because you never know yeah. what you were going to see. It just appeared um, and it was very well integrated into the landscape. We yes. really enjoyed it. Yeah. I yeah. just want to mention that for every, so you really have to sort of pay attention and you have to walk. Yeah. The, you know, the, the sculpture is, is very well integrated into it and, and the garden itself has that aspect to it. You know, there's, that's one of the things about, from my brief understanding of Japanese, of, of Japanese stroll gardens, that's one of the, the aspects that, that they bring to it, which is these, these little unexpected vignettes, these things that you stumble into. Um, uh, very small, intimate areas, and then and then larger, you know, vistas and views. Um, so, um, Sarah's pieces are are you know basically dealing with kind of what um, uh, the global there's there's sort of a global theme of the of the bird man of the bird woman of the of the um, metamorphosis and flight um, so she's exploring that and here here are some of her pieces in that are that are inside in the gallery um, now Bibiana Huang um, Mateus is the is the curator of all these, uh, and I hope I didn't massacre her name. Uh, <laughs> um, is the curator of all these of all these shows. She she does a fabulous job um, at at flowing from from very different artists throughout throughout the shows. Um, on the on the right, I've got an insert of. Uh, Sarah is going to be doing a workshop, uh, becoming a bird, uh, creating small environmental sculptures. So I'm going to I'm going to say more about that toward the end of the talk. But um, you know, you can see now what I was talking about about the integration of of paper into her wire wire pieces. You know, th there's just a really wonderful fresh kind of ephemeral quality to having the paper mixed in with the with the with the wire and more structured um, uh, kind of matrix that holds that holds these things. And again, there are these moments out there. You just have to keep your eyes open and see what's there. Different kinds of textures, the layering. Um, it's, it's really quite wonder, a wonderful small stroll garden that they've got there. Larry, yes. somebody just commented in the chat. By the way, the chat function is used if you want to make a comment or ask a question. And he brought up the fact that I'm having a program on what it's like to be a bird, October mm -hmm. 12th. That's right. I, it was so far in advance, I didn't talk about it. But yeah. we are having this program with David Silby. David Silby wrote the definitive uh, works on uh, birds and illustrating birds. There you go. So we're going to be co-sponsoring that program with 11 other libraries. And it's October 12th at 7 o'clock. Okay. So um, you could have her talk, your talk about birds and wires and paper <laughs> integration, 
and we will talk about feathers and bones and uh, <laughs> air sacs. Well, yeah, you can go to you can go to Sarah's uh, workshop on right. on October second, and then and then listen to listen to right. the lecture from the Chappaqua Library. <laughs> right, it's a full experience. <laughs> Now that there's there's a, a, a much larger um, uh, gallery and there's a group exhibit in there. Um, voices I remember. Um, a lot of this is um, put together from you know thematic elements from childhood memories and from past experience made into artworks so basically um there there's going to be you know this is it's a big show so there's there's a number of there's really eight artists in this show um really the the uh this is the hundredth anniversary of of the Nineteenth Amendment, um, providing women's suffrage. So basically, they invited these artists to um, uh, bring their emotional memory to to bear through their artwork. Um, so um, this piece that's behind. Um, is is a, a drawing by uh, George Ann Gowan, and we're gonna move here. Um, what if it was possible to pass from one reality to another, to transmigrate out of a dream? What if voices could be heard from a distant place through the collection, the recollection, of everyday objects, what if the bids, the bits of discard commonly seen as ordinary in our lives were actually parts of some beautiful past whole? What if I could remember my fractured family through art plucked from its existence in another world. So, you know, we have these, these pieces that are kind of doorways that are kind of passages into, into an, another space, another, another way of, of seeing. Um, you know, she's got these poles <laughs> on it. It, there's a there's this box business where you're kind of like entering into um, a different space. She has a number of pieces in in the show, so I I'm not doing I'm not doing everything that everybody's got in the show. It's definitely worth going to see. Um, And um, Mimi Graminski, um, an, an homage to her uh, child self, Graminski returns to first loves, dresses and drawing. During her childhood, she discovered the joy of making something with her hands, creating something where nothing was before. Uh, slowly, Leftover scraps of wool, fake fur, trim from family friends who worked in the garment district came to life as distinctively shaped doll clothes. They were inspired by everyday inexpensive cotton house dresses from her, that her mother wore, outfits her older sisters made, a skirt, with matching green plaid cape and big orange sweater, vivid memories still circulate 
of the grass green, red, and pink dotted Swiss dress made by a cousin visiting from Sicily. So you can begin to see these layers, these layers of memory, the layers of, of feeling, the layers of association in these pieces and, and kind of, the, there's a there's a joy to this. It's um, you know Emerson wrote wrote a wonderful essay on memory and how how it it's alive, it's present, it it actually informs our present, how we see our our present life, and we look back at these memories and see them from different points of view constantly. Color, texture, and lines are the most essential factors for me it, as an abstract expressionist to convey my inner voice on paper or on canvas. From my earliest days as an artist, my fascination with the cosmos was, has pulled me further into the exploration of the night sky, inspiring me and leading me toward an artistic and spiritual experience. My imagination of cosmic space soars higher into the infinity where I witness the birth and death of stars. So as I said, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a limited taste of what these artists do. There's, there's at least a dozen of these in, in the show, it may, it may be more than that. I can't remember right now off the top of my head, but they're really beautiful textured layered pieces, um, well-painted. And again, you see the, the, the intercultural exchange that 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 is in this. These these women are from very different backgrounds. Um, okay, so these paintings are a series of portraits of my mother. They were painted over a six month period of time, around the time she passed away in 2011. My my painting of this series was a process as life and death is process. Painting is a way of tapping into memories in a visceral way. The time lapse involved was part of the healing process. The circular nature of memories come into play here in that my mother visited the Hammond Museum and Japanese Stroll Garden when she came to visit us from Wales. They're very poignant pieces. Okay. <sighs> okay. So my mixed media Installation explores the relationship between identity and landscape, cultural myths and stereotypes related to my Chinese American heritage. Images refer to historical documentary photos as well as family photo albums. Having never traveled to Asia, these secondhand photographs resonate as surrogate memories. And you know, one of one of my first reactions is is in you know in Chinese culture there was all that business of foot binding and all that that women of of a certain class used to we used to go through, um, which given the suffrage aspect of this, it, it it it's very evocative. At least that was my reaction to it. That was something that was there that I saw as a layer in, in these pieces. Okay. 
how I wanted to say goodbye. Um, so, I mean, any of you who've ever had a dog, you get where this is coming from. Uh, you know, that, that loss takes, takes a lot of time and, and, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a bittersweet aspect to that. So there's an element of the fantastic, of the surreal in, in, in many of these pieces. There's that kind of play of dream of the subconscious, um, of memory as a, as a kind of foggy, drifting, ephemeral thing. Okay. Um, so, this series was basically painted from photographs from from her from Eleni's childhood, from a, a photo that that she found that her mother had taken of them by the sea in France. So you know, there's there's that whole element of aspects of self of different different ways of seeing the same image. Um, there's also this business of, of her relationship to nature and the, the whole idea of holding, holding the bird of, of it's, it's kind of um, a, a, a Franciscan thing, uh, your relationship to nature. Um, well done paintings. I really, you know, enjoy the series and the, the variations on the theme that she played with in the series. Okay. And back to this Zen garden business. Okay, Broad Powers. Okay, this is another exhibition that is, that is in the show. It's by three artists who I, I, whose work I know well. Uh, Carla Rae Johnson presents large photo stand-ins stand of Harriet Tubman in camouflage, uh, coming back at, uh, at night to help people cross the border. You know, what would, what would Harriet make of what goes on right now in in in, uh, in our our culture? So um, basically, Carla Ray made these made these wonderful crazy stand up pieces that you can stick your face in and take a shot of yourself as as um, Harriet Tubman uh, bring bringing over the the uh, the needy children over the border. Um, or you can have your picture taken as Frida Kahlo returning to give painting lessons to the indigenous Americans in the Southwest. Um, Carla Ray is a very funny lady. I mean, she's got, she's got a great sense of humor, but also a, a, a sense of, of our obligation to stand up for the causes that we believe in, in, in the work. Um, she's very inventive, very wonderful draftsman. Her drawings are really tremendous. Um, and I recommend if you, if you haven't seen her work, go check out her website. Actually, check out the websites of any of these artists and you can get more of a, a fuller picture of what their work is about. Um, but, you know, Carla Ray is a prankster as much as she's uh, um, a politically active person. She's also got this, got this very active sense of humor and, and I, I love her stuff. Um, okay. And now we've got the other two who are in, in, this, in this show. Um, uh, Marcy B. Friedman is a 
visual artist and performance artist. And, and what she did with these pieces is um, take images of artists, of, of art historical pieces and, and do them in past and present. Um, it's, it's really, uh, let, me, let me get the, uh, the zoom up so we can zoom in a little bit so you can see some of these images a little bit closer so you can see what she's playing with in these pieces. And you can see, you know, these staid kind of historic heroines and, and what, they, what they look like in contemporary life. Uh, you know, this, this lady in here uh, trying to deal with uh, uh, helping her child Zoom a lesson. Uh, <laughs> Um, and there's, you know, there's basically, you know, there's, there's all these different elements, you know, what, what are, what would these women be like in contemporary life? Okay, and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over to Mary McFerrin's work. And this is her um, homage to suffrage. Um, and she actually is going to be giving a lecture tomorrow at one o'clock at the Hammond Museum on this piece and talk about the research that she did on all the, all the sayings and the characters that are in it and the, 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 the mythology behind it and, and all of that. Very interesting. Um, so it's definitely worth going to take a look. And if you're of a mind, go and go go to the the museum tomorrow. Let's see. I'm gonna go. There we go. Uh, you're cordially invited to an art talk and guided tour on suffragists. Um, a wall collage is part of the Broad Powers um, at the Hayes Gallery at the Hammond Museum. So basically, she'll be there talking about the symbolism and, and talking more about the quotes. And she, I'm sure, will be able to answer any questions that you have in great depth. And Marcy is also going to be doing a presentation. Now, I, I will have more information about this at the end of the talk, but um, uh, Marcy will be part of a, uh, a group um, uh, reading and performance on, on Sunday, September 26th at 3, three o'clock. So that's a, that's a another possibility for getting you out there. Okay. Marcy's, Marcy is a, a wonderful performance artist herself. She's quite funny, but has a great deal of knowledge. She's, she's a um, art historian, along with being a performance artist and, and visual artist. So the Hammond Museum features these tea ceremonies. And in actuality, there's a whole series of uh, YouTube videos that they've been doing since I believe it was last May, but I could be wrong about that date. But they've done um, a whole series about, about the symbolism and about the, the, the different elements of the tea ceremony. Um, I know very little about this, but if you're interested, you, I'm, I'm sure that you can tune in on YouTube and, and, and find the Hammond Museum um, uh, tea ceremonies that they, that they have posted there.
Okay. And as I said, tomorrow is the 55th annual moon viewing concert. And um, basically the, the concert won't, won't begin until 8.30. The, the dinner is going to be from 6.30 until whenever. Uh, but as I said, we missed out on that. Uh, but it's definitely someplace I would go to hear this concert. I, I'm going to try and make it. So the Hammond Museum and Stroll Garden is at, you know, basically you can you can just um, plug the the address into your phone and get yourself there because it it's a little bit out of the way. You know, you've got you've got some some twists and turns on the roads to get there, but uh, it's it's well worth a visit. Um, it's free, open to the public. Um, although the, I'm going to retract that, the, the concert tomorrow is $25. Um, and you need to, you need to, you know, kind of sign on for that. But, but visiting the museum is free. And these are the three workshops I was talking about. Mary McFerrin, um, that's tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock. Um, and all of this is on their website. So you can, you can go there and, and go to your, go to the events area and, and you'll get, you'll get the in-depth skinny on all these things. Um, so, uh, that about does it for our visit for today. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. No, there's no questions, but okay. thank you, Larry. Um, that was very comprehensive because I was there. Yeah. And I, had, I had forgotten a lot of these places. <laughs> it is um, very interesting. Uh, so thank you all for coming. I hope you go to our website, and uh, which is chapacolalibrary.org to see all the other offerings of programs that we have at the library, virtual programs. Uh, nothing is um, uh, somebody, so um, the, the programs will be virtual until whenever. Right. Um,